Hello aspirants, I welcome you all to daily newspaper analysis of Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 25th of September 2024. Now let us see the list of articles that we are going to discuss today. In this first article, we will be seeing about what is ocean acidification. In the second article, we will be seeing about ISRO's planned mission to Venus. And in the third article, we will be seeing about NHPC's plan to raise fund. So these are all the articles we are going to discuss today. Without any delay, we will get into the news article discussion. Now look at this news article. This news article talks about a report by Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research. So according to this report, it states that world's oceans are becoming very acidic to properly sustain any marine life. So this is what the news article is about. So let us revise about what is this ocean acidification from the prelims perspective. So from the word ocean acidification itself, you can identify what it means. So it means that, so it is nothing but the decrease in pH level of ocean due to excess CO2 absorption. So we all know that 7 is the neutral pH level for any kind of liquid. When this 7 pH level increases, we tell it as alkaline. And when it decreases, we tell it as acidic in nature. So the ideal condition for any ocean is 8.1 to 8.2 pH level. So when this decreases, we call it as ocean acidification. So this basically happens due to the excess absorption of CO2. And this have an impact on marine animals. If you ask how, when excess of CO2 is available, leads to the formation of carbonic acid and reduces carbonate ions. These carbonate ions are very required for any kind of marine organism that has a shell or skeleton. So when these ions gets declined due to ocean acidification, it impacts the marine life. So this is how one impact the other. So now let us see what are all the causes of these ocean acidification. There are certain human activities that actually causes this. First is the fossil fuel combustion. So this fossil fuel combustion increases the release of or emission of CO2 which again impacts this ocean acidification. Secondly, deforestation. We all know that every tree they take in the carbon dioxide and gives out oxygen that is O2. So when plants are declining, the CO2 conversion to O2, this decreases which means CO2 in the air will be very high, right? So this again leads to ocean acidification. Third is cement production. It is the leading or the highest CO2 emission among other industrial activities. Then comes the industrial activities, especially the heavy industries like uh, uh, turning iron ore or any kind of ore into metal. So those kinds of heavy industries, they emit a lot of CO2. So they also impact the atmosphere as well as the ocean leading to its acidification. Finally, agriculture, we do certain agriculture like tillage, agriculture and etc. So this also leads to increase in emission of CO2, especially the stubble burning that is a issue in India. Even this practice increases CO2 in atmosphere. So if you want in data, we can say that oceans have observed 30 percentage of emitted CO2 since the industrial revolution, which is very huge. Now let us quickly go through what are all the mitigation measures that can be taken for these ocean acidification issue. See the first thing is reducing carbon emission. We have to reduce carbon emission by transition to renewable energy and we can try energy efficient technologies that do not emit a lot of CO2 or any kind of greenhouse gases and we can also use technologies like carbon capture and storage. So the best option for the carbon storage is using old oil fields by digging underground storage tunnels. So this can be done for capturing the carbon and storing it. So this can even be implemented in heavy industries where the emission is very high. So this is the first mitigation step. Secondly, we can announce marine protection areas or the MPAs. So by announcing MPAs, we can protect eco-sensitive areas like coral reefs and mangroves and we can contain any spread of diseases due to this ocean acidification especially the coral bleaching those can be identified very earlier and it can be separated from the healthier one to contain the impacts on other corals so this can be done thirdly we have to reduce agricultural runoff instead of focusing on fertilizer based agriculture we can focus on sustainable farming practices so this will 
saves the environment as well as the ocean by preventing any kind of chemical runoff. So this will also reduce the impact of human activities on the marine lives. Apart from this, we can restore marine ecosystems that have been damaged priorly by any kind of ocean acidification. This includes coral restoration. We can restore artificial corals and we can build or plant many coral plantations. This can be restoration can be done in order to mitigate this issue. We can even use ocean alkalinity enhancement or in short called as OAE which is nothing but adding naturally occurring minerals to neutralize acids that is already present in oceans. So these are all certain mitigation measures that you can remember. So, so far we have seen about what is ocean acidification. We saw that ocean acidification is decrease in the pH level of ocean. Then we saw what are all the causes of it and we saw what are the mitigation measures. So, with these understanding, now let us try to answer this particular question. Which of the following are the impacts of ocean acidification? Three statements are given. Firstly, decrease the ocean pH level. Increase the concentration of hydrogen ions in seawater. Thirdly, causes the ocean to become more alkaline. So, what is the correct answer for this question? The correct answer is option A, 1 and 2 only. So, with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this news article. This news article talks about ISRO's planned mission to Venus. Now, look at this news article. This news article talks about ISRO's planned mission to Venus. So, this mission will be launching on March 2028. However, remembering this is very important for your preliminary examination. So, we shall see what are all covered in this news article from the prelims perspective. First, we shall see why studying Venus is very important. See, we can say Venus is a Earth twin or the twin of Earth because it has similar size, density and composition, but it has a varying climate and atmosphere. So, understanding the climate and what led to the deterioration of atmosphere, we can understand the planetary evolution itself. So, that is why studying Venus becomes very, very important. So, now let's see some of the specific details about Venus. See, it has surface temperature of around 462 degree Celsius and it has an atmosphere predominantly consisting of carbon dioxide with sulfuric acid clouds. So, I am telling this because seeing through these clouds is very difficult. But we are making a mission that has a radar that penetrates all these clouds to examine the atmosphere of Venus. So, just imagine the significance of the mission itself. Also, since the atmosphere has predominantly carbon dioxide, it also has a effect called the runaway greenhouse effect. So, these carbon dioxide actually traps a lot of heat inside Venus atmosphere and increasing the surface temperature of the Venus itself. So, can you understand the atmospheric phenomenon of Venus itself is that way. So, understanding the atmosphere of Venus could help us in mitigating any extreme events that happen to Venus itself. So, having discussed about Venus, now let us quickly go through what are all the vision of the mission. So, the key objectives of the mission includes firstly understanding the surface, atmosphere and ionosphere. Ionosphere is the outermost layer of Venus atmosphere. So, this means that we will be investigating dense carbon dioxide which is about 96.5 percentage of the Venus atmosphere and we will be studying the high energy particles that influence the atmosphere of Venus. Also, we will be understanding the interaction with solar winds. Even Earth has interaction with solar winds in different ways. So, similarly to Earth, Venus also has its atmosphere and we will be identifying how these solar winds will affect the atmosphere of Venus. So, these are all the objectives of the mission that is going to be launched by ISRO in 2028. Now, we shall see how this particular mission is different from previous missions. See, this particular mission focuses only on atmospheric chemistry, its dynamics and surface evolution and it also tries to take pictures with high revolution radar instruments by penetrating the cloud cover. Also, it has an highly elliptical orbit of 500 to 60,000 km to have a comprehensive observation of the atmosphere of Venus itself. So, this is how this particular mission is different from previous missions. So, so far we saw about certain basic information about Venus. Then we saw why studying Venus is very important. 
then we saw what are all the components or what are all the objectives of this particular mission then we saw how it is different from the previous one so with this understanding now let us try to solve a preliminary practice question let me read out the question for you consider the following venera 1 mariner 1 akatsuki how many of the above or venus missions so the correct answer for the question is option c all the three are mission to venus so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion now look at this news article the news is that nhpc that is the national hydroelectric power corporation limited which is a state-run hydro power company it is going to raise a fund of 2300 crore rupees this financial year by securitizing the return on equity of Dulhasti power station in Jammu and Kashmir. So, this is what the news is about. Here, you have to understand about two important things. Firstly, NHPC is doing this under a mission named National Monetization Pipeline. And another thing that you have to remember is what is this securitization? So, we are going to see both of this in the prelims perspective in this news article discussion. So, let us start with what is this? national monetization pipeline or nmp see this national monetization pipeline was launched by niti Aayog in 2021 the main aim of this nmp is to monetize public sector assets if you're asking how so government it will be building any asset any public sector asset this asset will be leased to the private sector so what is the profit for government in this process or what is the profit for the private sector? If you ask that, anyway, government is going to get written from that particular asset, but it will be getting in a future timeline, right? But government requires fund now to invest it on another or other infrastructure. So what government does is, it gives lease to private company and gets back the fund immediately and the private company, whichever company it might be, who got the lease, they will be running the lease and they will get profit. So, this is how this national monetization pipeline actually works. So, the sectors that include this NMP, which in, so the sectors that include this NMP, so this national monetization plan includes sectors like road, railway, airport, power generation and even transmission. And the news that we saw this NMPC's project, this will be falling under the power sector. So, have this basic understanding about national monetization pipeline and what are all the steps involved in this particular thing. With this understanding, now let us try to understand what is this securitization. So, this securitization is converting liquid assets, that is the future cash flows into securities. The same concept only, but here the lease amount, it will be released in the form of securities or bonds. That is the only difference between the except that the concept everything or same so instead of a leasing document the entire fundraising will be done through a security or a bond so any private company who want to buy this bond they can buy it by paying how much ever the security actually cost so we can say that the purpose of so so we can say that currently nhpc is doing this to raise fund based on future revenue from power projects. We have already done this with Kishan Ganga power station securitization. Just make note of this. This is not the first time we are doing it. Now, let us quickly go through the advantages of securitization. See, firstly, it provides liquidity, which means it converts future cash flow into upfront capital. So, instead of getting a capital after a long period of time, the securitization process provides the capital priorly itself. So, this is the first thing and this provides liquidity. So, this is the first thing, it provides liquidity. Secondly, it transfers some risks to investors. So, it is up to the investor to maintain the asset and get profit out of it. Thirdly, it offers financial flexibility by providing diversification of fund sources. So, instead of relying on traditional loan or equity, we can rely on securitization. Any investor can rely on this securitization because it will be issued at a lower interest rate than any other bond. So, for the investor also, it will be a low capital, lower cost of capital. And for the government also, it will receive the fund that it requires in the priority. And finally, it enables 
accessibility to finally it provides accessibility to unlock values of underutilized assets so these are all certain advantages of securitization however it has certain disadvantages let us go through them one by one see firstly it is very complex and involves a lot of legal and financial complexities and understanding how it works requires awareness among the investors itself secondly since it has increased risk the investor will face or the company will be exposed to reputational risk and market volatility so many investors they will restrict from taking part into the securitization process thirdly when government gives up an asset to leasing it reduces future revenue for the government even though the ownership will be with the government itself however the future revenue will be lost in the process which will be gained by the private sector and again success of this securitization depends on the credit rating sensitivity of the investor so if it want to be success we have to provide bonds only to investors who have a very good credit rating finally securitization actually depends on market condition for investor interest so it is up to the interest of investors to buy the securitization and gain the benefit of it so these are all certain disadvantages of securitization so so far we have seen about national monetization pipeline then we saw what is securitization then we saw what are all the advantages of securitization what are all the disadvantages of securitization now with this basic understanding let us try to solve a prelims practice question here three statements are given you have to find which of the statement given here is or are correct first statement says securitization involves converting future cash flows from an asset into a marketable security second statement says the process of securitization results in the company permanently transforming ownership of the underlying asset to the investors third statement says securitization can help companies raise funds without issue without increasing their debt burden so what is the correct answer for this particular question the correct answer here is option b 1 and 3 only so aspirants if you like the video hit like do comment and don't forget to subscribe to shankara ias academy youtube channel now thank you so much for listening